I want to turn now to Dr. Isaac Bogot. She's joining me to react to this breaking news. Uh, you got a big smile on your face already. We just saw your teeth for the first time in a while. Okay, Johnson & Johnson, we just said it's the fourth vaccine out there. But for many in your world and soon to be in ours as well, this is really going to change the game when it comes to fighting COVID-19, doctor. Absolutely. It's a great shot. All the data to date points in the direction that it's a truly effective vaccine. Uh, it protects significantly against people getting the infection. And it also protects against severe infection, hospitalization and death. Uh, and as you point out, it's a single shot. The logistics of this are far less challenging. You don't need minus 20 or minus 80 storage. It's a one and done vaccine. Um, you know, you just utilize it's actually less than half of the resources just because you don't have to bring people back and give them another vaccine. You can vaccinate more people in a shorter period of time, provide terrific immunity to the a terrific protection against this infection. Um, great news. I, I, I really hope we get it's one thing to approve it. It's another thing now to get access to this and integrate this into programs. The other really important point about this is that because it doesn't have that same cold chain, you can easily, easily, easily integrate this into primary care offices, into pharmacies. You can put this on mobile trucks to help with uh, vaccinating people who are experiencing homelessness uh, and, and other, other populations. You can uh, easily get this into more rural, remote and underserviced areas. It's a very, very versatile vaccine. And this will do a lot of good when we have access to this in Canada. OK, and that's a key point that you mentioned there right at the end. When we have access, how quickly do you think we'll get this vaccine delivered to Canada? Yeah, that's the interesting part, because it's not entirely clear. We know that they have had some production challenges. And in fact, other companies like Merck uh, in the United States is going to help produce uh, this vaccine. So it's not entirely clear how quickly they can mass produce it. And of course, it's once they do, it's not entirely clear how, we, how soon we'll get it here in Canada. But, you know, step by step by step. And, and the first step, of course, uh, is, is actually getting the permission to use this vaccine in Canada, which we now have. The next step is let's see this company mass produce it and then let's get it into onto Canadian soil and then into Canadian arms. Yes, okay, can we talk about the efficacy rate? Uh, clinical trial data suggests overall it's about 66%, but that goes up to 88% uh, when it comes to how well the vaccine prevents severe illness and hospitalizations. Yeah, a very good point because when we're talking about the, these, uh, these efficacy numbers, we have to also remember the era in which they were tested in. And we, we saw this with AstraZeneca as well. People look at AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson, they see, oh, it's, it's, you know, they say, oh, it's 60%. Uh, the efficacy is about 60%. And then they look at the Moderna, the Moderna and the Pfizer, and they say, well, it's nine, no, those are 94%. And what, you know, what's with this massive difference? We have to remember the era in which Moderna and Pfizer were tested, and there were very few circulating variants of concern. And the era that Johnson and Johnson and, and Novavax and AstraZeneca were tested in had many more variants of concern. That playing field is a little more level than what those numbers suggest. So that's the first point. Now, it, it still might be the case where one is more effective than the other. That's okay, but I don't think that delta is as big as many suggest. The second point is we have to think about where we are now in Canada, right? We still are in the middle of a public health emergency. Here's a product that will significantly reduce your chances of getting the infection. And if you're unlucky enough to get the infection, here's a product that significantly reduces the chances of you getting a severe infection, hospitalization and death. Winner, a total winner. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, it's nice to prevent the infection. But of course, the real metric is preventing people from getting really, really sick, going to hospital and dying. Those are the clearly extremely important things to do. And, and if you have a product that can facilitate that on a mass level, then you've got to get access to that product and, and, and use it. So I think when we look at all the products that are now available to us in Canada, you've got your Pfizer's, your Moderna's, your AstraZeneca's, soon to be the Johnson & Johnson. We should use all of these uh, at our disposal to quickly vaccinate the most vulnerable among us. We know that's age, 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 age. And then, uh, and of course, those with underlying medical comorbidities, we really need to do what we can to, to rapidly protect the most vulnerable folks among us. Uh, Dr. B Dr. Bogach, what does this mean for the timeline? And, and I want to just remind everyone, and you kind of touched on this, that Merck 
has partnered with Johnson & Johnson in the U.S. They made that announcement earlier this week. Merck's uh, product development wasn't going so well, so now they're partnering with J&J &J to get the product manufactured and out there. As a result, we saw Joe Biden saying that every American would be vaccinated by the end of May. Our prime minister has said by the end of September. What do you think about the timeline now? Could that be moved up now? It certainly can. And there's a couple of things that are pointing us in that direction. One is that we've now had the uh, NACI guidance. That's the federal uh, guidance for uh, how the vaccines can be used. They have basically said that you can space apart the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines by up to four months, which means you can vaccinate more people uh, in a shorter period of time. But now you've got access to AstraZeneca and we've got, you know, well, a few hundred thousand doses came, about half a million doses came into Canada recently. We're going to have access to about another million and a half doses of that soon. And now, of course, we've got Johnson & Johnson, which is a single dose uh, vaccine. So when we have access to those, uh, those vaccines as well, it just pushes up the timeline for vaccination. Um, I have a feeling, and again, it's hard to actually do, do the math because it's not entirely clear how much vaccine we're going to get and when we're going to get it. But it, it just pushes up the timeline. So it's hard to look anyone in the eye and say every Canadian will have at least a first dose of a vaccine by X date. But that date is, is, is clearly going to be uh, before the end of September. Before the end of September. OK. And I will just also add, um, President Biden has said the factories that are producing this product in the U.S. are working 24-7. They're working round the clock. So we don't know yet what that means for us, but we're going to find out. We're going to have a technical briefing coming up next hour uh, with Canadian health officials, federal officials. We've also got the prime minister coming up at 1130. So, Dr. Bogat, you've done a great job answering the questions and responding to this breaking news. And we're going to have more details on this throughout the day.